Good morning, SIGGRAPH. Uh, my name is Martin Meyer. I'm a head of creative specialists. And uh, today I would like to start the day by showing you Cara VR, which is, our, which is a plugin for Nuke that allows you to stitch uh, cameras from multiple sources and produce a really cool virtual reality um, environment, essentially, uh, from pre-recorded footage. So, as I said, Cara is a uh, plugin for Nuke. And if you have any pre-captured video from multiple camera sources, you can produce uh, 360 spherical environments from it. Um, so Kara is really focused on speeding up the whole process of stitching. Um, and it's a unified tool set that has all the tools you need to actually produce a, the fi final result. It's built on the expertise that came from a stereoscopic work that we done with our Ocula plugin. And it's using a lot of the concepts that are coming from there. And as the whole VR industry is essentially evolving, we are adopting a lot of the workflows that are appearing on the, on the market and we are trying to stay ahead of the curve uh, with Cara. So just to give you a few highlights about the features, what are inside of the application, uh, we have a fully GPU accelerated stitcher that allows you to take in the footage and process it at really, well, at high speed. Um, it's built on the disparity technology from Ocula, and you can do mono and stereo output at the same time from the same source to arrive to the final result. Um, quite often, the stereoscopic capture has uh, exposure issues. Some of the cameras are either automatically exposed or, or not, uh, or they have a wrong vi white balance. Kara allows you to unify it all using one node. You can level out these discrepancies between the cameras and create one unified 360 environment. We also allow you to track in 360 and create uh, and stabilize the horizon, which is really important to provide really seamless, uh, to provide really seamless 360 experience through the headset uh, so people don't get, don't get sick watching it. Um, on top of it, one of the best things about the plugin is the fact that it lives inside of Nuke, so when there are some issues, uh, I need to fix something about the capture. You have a nuke surrounding Kara and all the tools that come with it, uh, and you can use them to fix it and speed things up. Um, so things like spherical transform node that allows you to do the conversions between various, uh, various uh, projections like rectilinear or lat long. Uh, you have also 360 blur and convolve that uh, actually um, is intelligent enough to, to blur only around certain areas and more in the center and not on the poles. And um, the latest addition is that we can read deep data, uh, depth data from various sources. Uh, and while you're working with it, Kara constantly streams the output of the viewer to the headset. So you can get, uh, you can actually really evaluate if things are working, if it actually flies, if you can put things together and uh, you can view it through Vive or Oculus or anything that's out there because it's using OpenVR to, to connect. So just to kind of sum it up, we have a really nice seamless stitching that I'll show you in a second. Uh, we can composite new digital assets into the stitched environments. Uh, you can review directly on the headset while you're working with the footage. Um, we do the stitching automatically or semi-automatically. Nuke is entirely resolution independent, so you can really produce huge 360 environments uh, quite efficiently. Um, and since it's all, you can, it's all scriptable via Python APIs, you can actually automate a lot of these processes and do them automatically without a human interaction, which if you have a lot of footage to process, uh, Kara can be a really good tool to, um, to use. So this is just a few, this is just a few, this is a little list of the customers that are currently using Kara. Um, and the list is constantly growing. Um, it runs on wi Windows, uh, Mac, and Linux. Uh, it's compatible with the whole Nuke family. And um, it, we have some presets for camera rigs, but it essentially can figure out how the cameras should be laid out um, by itself. It can use um, the tracking and matching to, 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 to do that. It's fully GPU, GPU accelerated, and it installs in minutes. Great, so this is just the part of the presentation. Now I would like to actually take you through a short demo of Cara VR. So here we have the capture. This is actually the um, this is a four cameras, fairly wide fisheye lens. Um, so how do we get from this 
to something that looks like this. Let's just play it back. This project was kindly provided to, to us by Real Effects, uh, who did the um, and the playback. So we need to figure out how the cameras are laid out, how they should actually mesh together. So the first note or the first building block that I will use here is the solver. So let's just put the camera solver. This is the uh, node that uh, we'll figure out how the cameras are distributed or how they are capturing the world. If I look at the 3D space, you can see that I have all four cameras stacked on top of each other. Uh, I can use some of these presets that shipped with Kara. Uh, they try to map the most common rigs, 360 rigs that are currently on the market. Uh, I have no idea what this was shot with, so I'll just leave it, leave it on custom and let Kara do the work. Let it figure out how the cameras should be actually aligned. One thing I know that uh, my, the focal length of these cameras is really wide, so I just set it to something like 8 to match the uh, fisheye uh, distortion. So now I can go ahead and hit match. And Kara is right now going through all the footage, uh, all, four, all four clips, and it's looking for correlation points, how those cameras are actually related to each other. Um, it gave me this funky result, so now when I hit solve, uh, I'll get something that's much more logical, I guess. You can see that the cameras resemble something that they, you know, makes more sense. Obviously, um, first thing that I see is that the error threshold is fairly high, so you can get rid of the bad ones, refine this, and arrive to a smaller or more plausible uh, pixel threshold or solver um, number, and reject one more time and refine. This will just keep on decreasing, but 2.8 pixels is fairly acceptable for uh, to, to move on to the next step. So next thing that I need to do is to fix the way the cameras are actually aligned. So obviously this doesn't really make that much sense. Um, to Kara, it's all just pixels. So we need to establish the horizon line, where is up, where is down. So that can be done with the horizon line adjustment tool. I can just uh, drag drag this uh, across the screen, just double click this, and let's find where this can actually start making sense. I can do it all visually, but what it's really doing is essentially adjusting the camera rotation values. So now when I look at my camera alignment, this is, you know, this, this actually feels about right. This is four cameras looking outside in the world, it, it also, Kara also gives me a reference point in the 3D space. So when I look back, uh, I can kind of move to the next step. Let's just align these guys sort of in the center, more towards the center. And let's examine the, um, the footage. So what we see here is that these are, well, the cameras are aligned, but we have lots of ghosting in there happening. Um, that's there are two things that are contributing to this. First of all is the convergence. Uh, this defines how far, what, what, is this, what is the focal point essentially of, of how the cameras should blend, how they should mesh together. So if I go to like something like eight or even lower, six, you'll see that these guys will come together more, but the, the, the ones in the foreground will maybe become more disjoint. But this is uh, something that can be solved uh, by just utilizing the additional nodes inside of Kara. So what the solver actually did, it created some metadata. And um, what I can do is just, uh, doo -doo -doo. so it creates some metadata that can be used further down the stream. Uh, and the next node that does most of the heavy, heavy lifting is the stitcher. So the stitcher takes all the metadata that the solver created and it fixes the blends. So we went from, from this to that. All the minor imperfections were, were erased. So th the way this actually works is that Kara is creating a stitch map, which is, it looks kind of like this. And it's a vector distortion map that, that essentially defines how far and how much the pixels need to move to meet with the other pixels to create a seamless uh, environment. So let's examine this. It looks 
pretty good generally, but um, we can do a little better. For example, it works for most of the stage, but this guy with this helmet um, is not blending all that well. There are many ways to fix this. I will do it manually, so you can see how, how I can start working on individual cameras again if needed. So from the stitcher, I can split the views again. Split and joined. And that will separate all the cameras again. So I have my result, and the individual cameras can be then composited over here are all the results. So let's find the guy, maybe in this camera and this camera, and I'll just get rid of one of them. I can um, look at this one and I'll just add a simple roto node. Oops. Simple roto node to this. And uh, let's quickly draw a mask around him. Smooth it out. Oops. And uh, I can add a little bit of feather to this. So I'm creating essentially an alpha that, um, that I can blend, blend, blend with all of this um, together. So let's take this one and subtract it from the result here. So let's say minus. That creates a hole. And um, when I look at the the result and add a C Blender node that will recalculate and it will fix the whole issue there in that particular uh, area. So what I'm trying to show you is that if issues arise, Kara has the nuke around itself that allows it to fix practically every issue that might, might show up. Uh, typically issues can be captured around the ceiling or the, or the, or the floor so that we can fix that by uh, let's say creating a spherical transform that allows me to look at a certain portion of the footage. So in this case, I'm converting my render uh, from lat long to rectilinear. I'm looking up, and then I created this matte painting in Photoshop to uh, fix uh, the issues right here. I can warp it back to 360 by going the other way, a little bit of color correction, and then merge it back with the footage and that way I get perfect fix for the ceiling. In a very similar fashion we can then look at the floor uh, by using the spherical transform with the roto paint, paint a little patch to fix wherever the rig was actually located, um, then warp it back to spherical environment and then merge it back. So Together, we can add also comp additional elements like this lens flare, and um, you have a full control and, and f the full nuke behind you at any point. So to <coughs> since I don't have a headset here to simulate the headset experience, uh, if I would look at the spherical transform uh, that converts this from lat long to rect rectilinear, I can convert it to many other, like uh, you know, lat long again, cube map, or fisheye, but that rectilinear is the one that simulates the headset, I guess, the best. I can then look around the environment and see that here I have, if I find it, somewhere here is the lens flare that I just added. But it allows you to evaluate and fix and stitch um, VR, VR um, spherical footage. So, well, thank you for your time. Any questions uh, about Caraviar? No? Great, so have a, have a, have a good cigarette. Enjoy the show. Thank you.